going on everybody welcome welcome to the watchtower podcast the non-jehovah's witnesses watchtower podcast and this is episode 172 ingersoll lockwood get used to hearing that name because we're going to be saying it a lot tonight but thank you guys for joining me and uh yeah this is what we do on tuesdays and saturdays we get together and we watch we watch for the signs of the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but we are told that we will know the season. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely believe this is the season, the convergence of these events that all seem to be pointing towards things that are going to happen in the day of the Lord. I absolutely believe that this is the season. So we watch for these things. We keep an eye on it, just like we're commanded to do in Scripture. And thank you guys for joining me tonight. So, yeah, episode 172, Ingersoll Lockwood. This is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a little different. I hope you all brought shovels. I hope you all brought scuba gear because what we're going to be doing tonight is going to be a little bit different. As you can see, we're not doing the End Times New Age series and we're not doing a regular one either. I'm going to take you guys on a journey with me and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about what I do when I talk about going down the rabbit hole. I think everybody has a different idea of what it is, but I'm going to show you exactly how I do that tonight. And I have a reason for doing so, but we'll get to that in a second. What I want to do first is I want to see what you guys are up to because, uh, well... I love you guys, so I'm glad all of you are here. All right, let's take a look. Um, let's just pick a random spot here. Uh, why not start here? What is going on, Julie Polly? Good to see you. Hopefully, you're having a good Saturday. Today is Saturday, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Today is Saturday. <laughs> glad you're here. Hopefully, you're having a good weekend so far. Good to see you. Uh, Christina is here. Jesus is the king. Absolutely. King of kings, lord of lords. The one and only God, man, nothing can ever touch him. That's for sure. Good to see you, Christina. Hopefully you're doing all right. Not of this world. What's up? Glad you're here holding down the fort. Uh, we got Asset Ministries as well. Good to see the toolbox alive and well. Be nice to my my tools, guys. Be nice to my tools. <laughs> good to see you guys. Uh, we got Coco Bear. Good to see you, Coco Bear. Hopefully you're having a good uh, Saturday. And uh, yeah. Hopefully you're doing all right. Good to see you. Uh, Viking loves Jesus. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Hopefully you're having a good weekend so far. Glad you're here. Vin Dog is in the house. What's going on, my brother? Good to see you, man. Uh, Montana Watchman, what's going on? Hello, saints of the most high Jesus Christ. Absolutely the highest of highs right there. Can't get any higher than the king himself. Good to see you, Montana Watchman. Glad you're here. Derek Otto is here as well. Good to see you, Derek. Uh, looks like Matt, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, good to see you. Looks like all my tools are here, so good to see you. Uh, we've got Jason. What's going on? We win. We absolutely do. We have already won. Thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. He did it for us. So thank you, Lord. Uh, we've got Terry. What's going on, Terry? Good to see you. Looks like we got Karen as well. God bless you. Well, God bless you too, Karen. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, Gerard is here. Good to see you. We got Nancy West as well. We've got Maya. Good to see you. What's going on? We got Joseph Davis. Good to see you. Looks like we got B. Rich as well. We got Heather Switzer. Good to see you. Looks like we got Dale Lawrence. And we've got Debbie. W. Mitchell as well. Good to see you guys. If I don't point you out, it's not that I don't like it. It's just we'd be here all night going through all the names, and I'm we, we don't have time to do that. This is going to be a big one tonight, so I don't want to keep you guys here forever. But I'm glad all of you are here, so thank you all for being here and uh, being with me today. Okay. All right. Last thing before we get into this. Sorry, my mind is going 100 miles an hour right now. I almost forgot we have housekeeping. Housekeeping! Thank you. Housekeeping. All right. So for housekeeping, usual spiel. If you guys can like, share, subscribe, get this out to as many people as you can. It's not about views. It's not about butts and seats, but it is about getting the warning out to people, getting people to Jesus and Jesus to people. That is why we do this. And with how the algorithm works on these things, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps to do that. Also, double check to make sure you're still subscribed, not only to my channel, but other channels that speak anything against the truth or against the truth, speaks the truth, against the narrative. There we go. Got it. And uh, or it's just a Christian channel because good old YouTube is shadow banning those types of channels and they're just removing subscriptions. So make sure you double check that as well. Also follow me, Rumble Odyssey Telegram. Those are my backup channels. Rumble is my backup live streaming channel. When the boot off YouTube happens, we'll be back up live streaming over there. Follow me, Odyssey, if you have an account. It's just kind of a backup platform over there. Nothing exclusive or anything, so you're not missing anything. It's just there in case something really bad happens and we have 
have to uh, move on over to there. And then Telegram as well for updates and, and news uh, things and, and links and, and anything like that that I don't necessarily put on YouTube, I will put on Telegram. So there is some exclusive stuff over there, but I, I don't like hide anything. So don't worry about that. Uh, but if you got Telegram, you might as well follow me there. Um, update on the end times new age series. We're still going to keep doing it. I'm not going to be, uh, uh, stopping that at all. Um, but it's probably going to be a little less often than normal. And we've been going pretty much hardcore every Saturday on that. And so what we're going to do is, uh, we're still going to do it, but it'll be more of like a pop-up type of thing. So it will still keep going. There's still tons of stuff that I have to talk about. Um, when it comes to that, it's just, it's not going to be every Saturday. So just want to let you guys know on that. Um, and then last but not least, you guys are the ones that uh, allow me to do this. My channel is not monetized. I don't get any money from ads or views or anything like that. Run solely off your guys' donations. So I thank you for that. And if you want to partner up and help me keep this going, um, I have donation links down below, Cash App, Venmo, and Give, Send, Go. Again, you guys are the ones that allow me to do this. And truly, I mean, I try and stress this as, as much as I can, but truly, you get, I thank you guys for all of your donations, your support, and your prayer, too. I get a lot of people saying they're praying for me, so thank you for that as well. So, all right. That's what we got, guys, as far as housekeeping. All right, let's do this, shall we? Let's go down the hole. All righty, so. I hope you all are prepared for tonight's show because I'm about to take you down a rabbit hole with me. Now, normally I'll take you on deep dives, but this is going to be a little different. Normally deep dives, um, I have dove into something. I've got the research. I've got answers to questions. I've, I've found all the connections to everything. And then I bring it to you guys so you guys can see what's going on uh, under the surface on these types of things. But when it comes to tonight, I'm probably... Hang with me. I'm probably going to leave you with more questions than answers tonight. Now, in the end, I am going to wrap everything up and I'm going to give you a reason why I'm doing this. There is a method to my madness on this, but I'm probably going to leave you with some questions. Now, you're probably going to have questions that pop up. I don't normally announce anything. It's just kind of there just in case. But if you do have a specific question about what's going on, you can type question in the chat and I'll see it and I'll see if I can try and answer it. Like I said, there's some things that I don't even know on this, but there's a reason. With that, I want to make sure that you guys stick with me. If you're going to start this, don't bail out in the middle and not get the end to this. It's extremely important that if you're going to start this, you watch it all the way to the end. Because like I said, there's a reason why I'm doing this. There's going to be a lot of weird things that we're going to come across, but I'm going to wrap it up in the end. So just if you're going to start this, stick it out to the end. It's going to be worth it. So again, tonight, I'm going to show you a little bit of what I do and the trails that I go on. I do this quite often. Um, a lot of stuff I don't show you guys because it's not worth showing, <laughs> but it's what I do. And so I'm going to show you a web and I use the word web specifically, a web of connections that leads to confusion, to deception, but they suck you in utilizing truth to keep you interested. That's the important thing. When you're going down these, uh, going down these, these rabbit holes, you're going to come across a lot of stuff that's going to sound legit, that's not going to be legit, and you're going to come across some stuff that's actually true, but it's just enough of like a breadcrumb to keep you going down and get you wrapped up in this. That's kind of one of the things that I want to show you because the important thing to remember as we go through this, who is the author of confusion? Who is the one that he uses half truths, partial truths? He'll use 98% truth, but just alter it slightly. And he causes deception. He causes confusion. He will get you wrapped up in things that may seem true or are partially true that are lies. This is Satan. He is good at this stuff. Remember Matthew 24, when the disciples came to him and said, what are the signs that we need to be looking for? Jesus started with, take heed, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived because Satan is the author of that. He is confusing. God is a, he's, he's a God of order. He likes to make things easy for us to understand. He doesn't hide things and he keeps it easy for us to understand. There's no confusion in it. So we got to remember that. So again, probably going to leave you with a lot of questions. That's okay. But again, I'm going to wrap it up in the end. So we must remember 
throughout this episode, if there's anything I want you to keep in mind the entire way through this episode, Satan is the author of confusion. I want you to hold on to that. And this, Ingersoll Lockwood, this web is built to confuse and have people spin in circles. I often get a lot of people asking me my opinion on what's going on with Q. And I often get people asking my opinion about what's going on with this Great Awakening thing. This is going to answer all those questions. I've kind of made mention of both of those in the past. I'm going to drive it home tonight. This is the episode to answer all of that. So what we're going to cover tonight, what this rabbit hole took me down. This rabbit hole began with a 19th century children's book, which led me to Ingersoll Lockwood, the writer, to Laconics of Cult, to Ingersoll, uh, Ingersoll Lockwood, the website, to Mickey Mouse Watches, to the Book of Enoch, to Space Force, to Hidden Messages Behind Letters, The Man of Mystery, Stephen G. Samuels, to the Department of Homeland Security, to John McAfee, to the Cyber Defense Magazine, to an AI JFK, to Project Looking Glass, to Q, to the Majestic 12, to Nazi technology, and then to the Great Awakening. With some more stuff thrown in there. This rabbit trail that started with a 19th century children's book went through all of that. And I'm going to show you just how that happened. So. Let's begin where I began. Published in 1893, Ingersoll Lockwood, the writer, the author, he was also a lawyer, wrote a book, a children's book called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey. That's right. This was written in 1893. Now, this book is about little Baron Trump leaving Trump Castle with his guide named Dawn heading for the center of the earth. You're probably noticing quite a few connections there already. Little Baron Trump and a guide named Don. You're seeing something. This eventually led to Ingersoll's last book called 1900 or The Last President, which is about a president named Brian getting elected with massive riots outside of his Fifth Avenue hotel in New York City due to people rioting about corrupt elections. That's right. That was the next book after that. And again, you're probably noticing a lot of connections. We've got Baron Trump, which if you don't know, Donald Trump has a son named Baron Trump. Baron Trump's guide is a guy named Don. Then we got another book called The Last President that takes place on Fifth Avenue Hotel, which if you don't know, Trump Tower is Fifth Avenue, New York City. And it has to do with corrupt elections. But not only that, to add to this, uh, when Brian, the newly elected president, was picking his cabinet, he chose a man by the name of Pence. If you guys don't remember, Donald Trump, his vice president, was Pence. That's right. These were written in the 19th century. And they seem to be prophetic in some type of way. Now... There's more. Let's keep going. To add more onto this, Baron Trump's full name in the book comes from a German descent, and it is Wilhelm Heinrich Sebastian von Trump. And again, being of German descent, worth noting that Wilhelm is a cognate of the English name William. Why is that important? Because the real Baron Trump's full name is indeed Baron William Trump. Do I have you hooked yet? Do I have you hooked yet? Very interesting, isn't it? The, so <laughs> don't zone out so far. I know a lot of people might be looking at this and going like, what on earth is going on here? How does this writer from the 19th century seem to be predicting all of these things and whatnot? Well, this is kind of a foundation for something as we move along. Now stick with me through this. Because there's more. In the Baron Trump book, it features none other than little Baron Trump dealing with portals, demons, and giants. 
portals, demons, and giants. Why is this relevant? Well, this stemmed me off into three other strings. That's what I call them. I call them strings. If I start peeling off into areas, I call them strings. Those three things from this so far, time travel, the biblical, and Nazis. That's where the strings led me when it came to this. So how did this come about? How did I start moving from the books, this writer, to finding out more? Well, I did a search on Ingersoll Lockwood, and I brought up, and it brought up IngersollLockwood.com. And here's where things start going bananas at this point. Let's take a look. This is IngersollLockwood.com, front page. Let's dive into this. First of all, we got U.S. Space Force. That is indeed a connection to Trump again. Remember, Trump is the one who set up the Space Force, but it's also going to connect to the Nazis, time travel, and the biblical all at the same time. I want you to just hang with me. Like I said, this is going to get nuts. Just stick with me through this. Now, it says they're a nonprofit there, which we'll get to the business side of things later on in this. Um, and then you'll see some things about all products and services are in support made in America with pride. We support and may match funds on like things like DARPA, DHS, NASA, Space Force, and all these things. And they claim to be part of, uh, have contracts with the U.S. government. Now, if we scroll a little bit further down on the website, we come across this. It says Ingerlo uh, Ingersoll Lockwood Inc. is a nonpartisan group of Americans with distinguished careers serving out our nation. Now, here's where we start getting our first lie, and I'll point it out as we continue to go through this. You'll see it. We don't believe in the QAnon conspiracy, nor would we ever. Please tell this to all. We're going to find that this is a giant lie, and it's kind of interesting that a government contractor that deals with Space Force, cyber defense, and all these types of things would have something about Q on there. Well, as we explore, you'll see why. And it says the status operational currently under attack talks about it, how it's getting uh, hacked and whatnot. But we start getting some interesting thing. The year is 2024 slash 5784. That's Jewish calendar there. That's Jewish date. So we've already got something a little weird happening on this. It talks about, you know, different websites, how they're trying to hack and, and have alternate websites on there. We have no social media accounts. Do not post on social media. And it says we do not provide files or attachment in any form. Now we come across something else that's a little bit weird. Copyright 2017 to 2030. Hmm. Now, why is this interesting? 2017 was the day that Trump got into office. 2030 is the date set for most of the globalist stuff that they want to get done. Kind of interesting how they have that as their copyright. We'll talk a little bit more about their copyright uh, later when we go over the business side of things. Again, we've got a long way to go on this. Hang with me. So the Baron Trump book led me to this and, and more. So first up, those three strings, we had the biblical, we had not seen, we had time travel. Let's start with the biblical, because I think that's a little bit important. We see the Jewish date set on the website. So that's one. We got a, we got a thing there. Now, buried in different letter characters and, and uh, punctuation marks on the website, if you just slowly scroll, you'll find some of these letters have hidden links um, in them. You will find links to news articles, but you will also find links to things like Phil Wickham Music. Hmm. And there's even a link hidden in there to a Catholic website on a specific page. Let's take a look. It brings up, why did Jesus not defend himself before Pilate? This is on a Catholic website and says, why did Jesus not defend himself before Pontius Pilate? When are we to do the same? Now we can scroll through that stuff, but it's the end part that's interesting. It says, Jesus before a Pilate had a purpose beyond its immediacy. Jesus was willing to be defenseless for the greater good of salvation for humanity, these situations are distinct from depression or apathy. It must truly be a free choice of the greater good and not mere indifference towards one's life. But it's that spot right there. Jesus before Pilate had a purpose beyond its immediacy. Jesus was willing to be defenseless for the greater good of the salvation of humanity. How many times have we heard people say, 
Don is going, or Donald Trump is going to do it the peaceful way. How many times have we heard Donald Trump get compared to Jesus Christ? We'll actually talk about one of those people at the very end of this thing. There's been countless times where the religion of MAGA, which by the way, if you want to look further into it, go into the Church of Satan. And uh, one of the levels in the Church of Satan is actually MAGA, M-A-G-A. Kind of interesting. Um, little note there. But how many times has Donald Trump been compared to Jesus? How many times have they said he needs to be defenseless? He needs to just take the impact of what he's doing for the greater good in order to come back and win back the nation. I don't know about you guys, but I've heard it a bunch of times. And Donald Trump clearly is connected to all of this as we go through this. So something to keep in mind that that would be hidden in there. Again, we're just getting started. Some I may have lost some of you already. Try and follow along. Hang with me. Another thing that I found on their website under their library page is the Book of Enoch. That's right. So if you go here... Under the library page, it says ongoing research reading recommendations for the U.S. Space Force homework, the Book of Enoch. That's right. They give you the Book of Enoch and it says these are the 17 books removed from the Bible by the rewriters of history. Let us begin with Enoch. Hmm. Now, why on earth would the U.S. Space Force need to learn about Enoch? Well, we start getting into... Things of Space Force, aliens, time travel, demons and portals and giants or Nephilim from the Baron Trump book. All this stuff strings together, guys. So again, the Book of Enoch deals with things like Nephilim, giants, and all these types of things. The same stuff found in the book. Plus, the site has the heavy connection to Space Force as well. So there's more. Another element of the biblical is Ingersoll Lockwood, the writer who wrote a book. This was, I think it was, uh, it was published in 1910, but it, he wrote it in 1881. That's right. Called The Laconics of Cult. Let's take a look at this thing, shall we? He wrote this before he wrote the Baron Trump books and The Last President. Keep that in mind. Laconics of Cult, Ingersoll Lockwood. Chapter one, superstition. Now he puts some interesting quotes and there it says, the gods that exist are born of those uh, that exist no longer. And he puts another one that says, the idea which man calls God only exists in the consciousness of man himself. Here we go with Gnosticism again, guys. We are gods. And it says, we do not resemble him. He resembles us. Again, that's the collective conscious Gnostic belief as well. So we can see that Ingersoll Lockwood, the writer is clearly into occultic things from what we've got. So again, this was published 1910, written in 1881. Lockwood was a, was an occultist and anti-religion, um, and he speaks of the shadowy gods on shadowy thrones while he pursued the creation of his own new cult called the Immortal Human. Again, if we start going back through the End Times New Age series that we've done, we are gods, We uh, Christ consciousness, conscious evolution, transhumanism, everything that he wanted is the same stuff that we see going on with mystery religion as well. So there's your tie-in to mystery religion here on Saturday. So it's in everything, guys. Now, continue to hang with me because we're going to keep on rolling through this stuff. And again, I promise I have a point about this. I promise I have a point. So hang with me. Let's take a look at the time traveler aspect. So the three strings, we looked at the biblical. We're still going to continue to see biblical elements throughout all this. But let's look directly at the time traveler aspect of this as well. Now, Ingersoll Lockwood, to a lot of people, is considered a time traveler. Many people actually believe that he is a time traveler. Since his books seem to point to him traveling into the future as far as 2030, which we see that's the copyright date on the website. We'll also see another connection to this later on. Again, you're going to have to try and remember a lot of this stuff as we go. Uh, but as far back as 2030, and again, he just seems to have some knowledge of what we see going on today. 
Now, even on the website, you'll see this quote unquote theory as well. So if we take a look at this, this is on the website under their history. It says in the late 1800s, our namesake Ingersoll Lockwood delivered futuristic and visionary content. Over a century ahead of his time, our mission is to build a brighter future for humanity, starting with the resurgence of American exceptionalism and strong defense. Our namesake, Ingersoll Lockwood, time traveler, question mark, mystery man, question mark, futurist, period. Read his books, you decide. This is our mission, deliver on the promise of American exceptionalism. And as we go through this, you're definitely going to see some element of what they're trying to do with that. Now, after spending several hours using the Wayback Machine, I say several hours, but I want to say it was a good 13, 14, 15 hours of fan dangling around with the website on the Wayback Machine because there's a lot of edits and changes throughout time. I'll give you that. But I spent a lot of time going through this. I found several alterations of that main website. So... What are some of these alterations that I think are important? Might be a little small. I apologize. I'll read it for you. Uh, it says, and this is part of the history page. This was an altered history page going back. It says, in the late 1800s, our namesake Ingersoll Lockwood delivered futuristic visionary content. Century ahead of his time, we see that. He passed on this knowledge. Here's where we start getting more information, more strings to go off of in this rabbit hole. Passed off this knowledge to S.G. Samuel Sr., who shared the Great Awakening plan. Alarm bells should be going off right about now. So we got S.G. Samuels, and we got the Great Awakening, also known as the Plan for the New American Century, with Stephen G. Samuels, followed by our entire team, who continue to carry on this tradition today. Our mission is to build a brighter future for humanity, starting with the resurgence of American exceptionalism. We're back to American exceptionalism. We leverage what our founder called Future Vision, where we deliver solutions based on trade secret predictive intelligence teams or technology, a mix of futurist inventions, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, all used for the good of humanity, says who? And then it goes on. If we continue to read down, it says uh, we unleash new technology safeguards to defend humanity from the novel threats and to accelerate the Great Awakening. Hmm. Yep. So we've got a couple of things right there, a couple more strings that we're going to go off of. We've got a name, uh, Stephen G. Samuels, and then we've got the Great Awakening. We'll, we'll go over those um, in the future here. So just hang on to those. Put those in your pocket, fold it up, keep it nice. Let's take a look at a second altered page from the website. This is from the main page. Now, this is where I start getting into, you can see it's highlighted the way it is. This is where we start getting into the secret, into the hidden and all this stuff. This is a hidden message on their website. You have to select all on the page in order to see it. So things start getting a little funky. It might be hard to read. I'll read it for you. And we start getting more hints of time travel. When traveling through time, sometimes you cannot command the destination, hence arriving in the Oregon dunes near Florence, Oregon, without even a flask of water was not well planned. I was fortunate that it was the right moment in time, however, early in May, the year 1959, as I recall. Franklin Patrick Herbert Jr., we got another name, hang on to that, happened upon me, as expected, and became my prodigy. I shared with him all that I could, some in metaphor, before departing for my next destination in the timeline. So we've got time travel happening here. I reminded him that when asked his inspiration for Dune, hang on to that, a codification of the Great Awakening, here we go again, must be attributed to his experiences from, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, in his hobby of cultivating mushrooms. Franklin agreed. Before I left his company, I imparted my final words of wisdom regarding one of the 2030 timelines, which I briefly experienced. I warned Franklin that all governments suffer a recurring problem. Power attracts pathological personalities. It is not the power that corrupts, I warned, but it is the magnetic to the corruptible. Such people do tend to become drunk on violence, a condition to which they are quickly addicted. 
Hence, the outcome of the 2020 election, one which Franklin, most appreciative, did not see. The sleeper must awaken. We're going to see that quite often as we continue to go through this. Okay. So we got a couple more names here. We've got Franklin and we've got Dune. So let's take a look at Dune. Who is this guy? Franklin Patrick Herbert Jr. He indeed lived in Oregon at the time specified on the website. And he wrote Dune. You will see that Dune 2, the movie, is coming out this year. And they already had Dune 1. These were graphic novels back in the day that have now been uh, movies. And a lot of people have connected The Great Awakening and, and, and New Age to the writings as well as the movies. So that's something to keep in mind there on that so you can look into that further if you want to but that's about where i stopped on my pursuit of dune because i had other things that i wanted to look into at that moment so again hang on to stephen g samuels we're going to get to him a little bit later and we've got a lot more to go hopefully i haven't lost you so far now the next thing that i came across on the website was a hidden recording again here we go hidden secrets all these things, shadow, all these things. We understand Satan is the author of confusion. He hides things. Keep that in mind. Uh, I then came across a recording of what I think is AI JFK. Seriously. Speaking about a few things. I'm actually going to let you guys listen to this for yourself because there is a lot in here. Check this out. According to Project Looking Glass, it appears on this timeline, Donald Trump will be the 45th president and he'll attempt to save the world from the globalists by attempting to save America. Most Americans, even citizens of the world, are not ready for what will be revealed at that time. The forces of darkness, which harm my family, will turn against him, but he and Junior will prevail. Justice will prevail. We choose a great awakening, not because it is easy, but because it is hard, and it is right and just. Therefore, where we go one, we go all. Any time will come many years from now in the year 2024 for Junior to reveal himself and right the wrongs of history. Humanity will defeat the Great Reset and a Great Awakening shall begin before. Where we go one, we go all together. A little freaky, isn't it? A little freaky. So we got more strings coming from this a lot. First off, direct references to Q direct they can put on their website that they're not affiliated but they have direct references to Q where we go one we go all or WWG one WGA is a Q thing that anybody in the movement they say that that is Q then we've got the great awakening again this is also directly tied to Q, but also it is rooted in New Age Enlightenment, Mystery Religion, and the Age of Aquarius. We're going to get into that stuff, too. We've got Trump again, because apparently he's talking about this uh, election with Trump, uh, 2024. And then he says, Junior will reveal himself in 2024 and right the wrongs. Now, this is curious. Junior who? What wrongs? How is he going to reveal himself? Could Junior here, whoever he is, because we don't know, all we can do is speculate, could Junior here be, in fact, be the Antichrist? Who will reveal himself this year? Who knows? Again, probably leaving you with a bunch more questions than answers, but I, I said that's what's going to happen, but that's something to keep in mind. But the string I want to follow is Project Looking Glass. You heard him say it, or the AI directly say it on there, through Project Looking Glass. What is Project Looking Glass? Now, if you search for Project Looking Glass, you're going to find a ton about a simulation computer program. That's not it. If you dig a little bit further, you will find that it's actually referencing a time viewing and time travel device. That's right. Before I explain that exactly, um, what exactly what that is, first, we have to get a little background on this. And we have to go through a guy by the name of Dr. Dan Burrish. 
who is a microbiologist, but also senior operative of the Committee of the Majority and the Ma uh, Majestic 12. We'll get to them in just a minute. Now, Burrish, during the 1991 Gulf War, was part of a black ops unit designed to eliminate biological warfare threats. Afterwards, he was uh, assigned to Project Aquarius. Hmm. What's Project Aquarius? Project Aquarius originally started under President Eisenhower in 1954 as a project called Gleam. It, is, uh, it was renamed in 1960 to Project Aquarius. Now, important to note, Aquarius is a part of the cosmic and astrology, but also about a collective awakening of people to fix the planet and restore order and harmony. Very similar to Q's Great Awakening. Am I, am I off on that? I don't think I am. Project Aquarius is about aliens and extraterrestrial tech, um, life, intelligence, and medical. And again, note that uh, the name or note the date that this started, 1954. That's going to come into effect a little bit later. Now, Burrish was connected to this program, which eventually led him to be involved with Project Looking Glass. Now, Project Looking Glass is about the creation of a yellow cube built from instructions found in ancient Sumerian and Egyptian tombs. That's what they say. Now, using light while holding this cube, it's a small cube that one person can hold. If you use the right light at the right angle, supposedly it would become a projector, allowing the holder to see the future. Now, it's rumored that elites had their hands on this and they would pass it to elites around the world in order to see the future um, and then make decisions that would guide, toward, uh, guide them towards the agenda that they want to get done. That's what we get from this story about this. So you're seeing, you know, the elites passing around this crystal ball, so to say, where they can see things um, and then maybe direct the way that they want to and the agenda that they want it to go. That's the story that we're getting on this. And that's what I found on this. But also with it, they created a special machine that if you place that cube in it, it will then become a portal to allow one to time travel. Portal. Same thing in Baron Trump's book. He goes through portals. Same thing. We're also going to see portals when it, we start getting into the Nazi stuff as well. If you don't know anything about Nazis, the occultists, the scientists, what they are trying to do, you're going to learn a little bit about what was going on. And that is legit stuff, what they were doing. I'll tell you what. Trying to open portals and, and demonic technology and all these things, we're going to get there. So... Something on this, that a question that popped into my mind when it came to this was, obviously nobody can see the future. God, only God knows the future and, and sees that. Could it be that this device that they created, could it be something that the demons could put on a picture show, make up some type of thing for them to see uh, in order to guide them in the direction that the demons wanted them to go. That is an option. That is something that they could very well do. Biblically, that is something that these, these demons could do if they, in fact, wanted to do so. Am I saying that's what's going on with this? I don't know. I don't know. But it's something to think about. There's a lot of things that, that we can just kind of think about when it comes to this. So we've got this cube that not only you can see into the future, but using a machine, you could time travel. That's what they say. That's Project Looking Glass. And if we go off of the Ingersoll Lockwood website talking about time travel, we go off of the AI recording Project Looking Glass being able to see what's going to happen in this timeline with Trump and the election and everything. We see how this does, in fact, fold into each other. Now, if we go further back, it's important to note that, again, Ingersoll Lockwood, the writer, lived at the same time as Nikola Tesla. Yep, we're at Tesla now. Why is this important? And how can we connect Lockwood, Trump, and time travel to Tesla? You're probably going, how on earth does this connect? Let's talk about it. Tesla, in his last days, claimed to have developed a way to 
time travel. He was apparently he came across this uh, accident that brought a, brought on something where he thought it was time travel and that you could do it. And on his deathbed, practically, he said that he created a way to time travel. Now, all documents of this are magically gone, of course. Why would they be available? Hmm? So how did that happen? After Tesla's death in 1943, the FBI had a none other than John Trump, Donald Trump's uncle, investigate Tesla's research, his files, and his inventions. Many of the files went missing. And soon after, John Trump, if you don't know, he's quite the genius. He was MIT. He was heavily involved in science and all these types of things. He created several things quite similar to what Nikola Tesla was known for. And this is where the idea of Lockwood and or Trump are time travelers. Yeah. Again, this is where the trail led me. This is where I start seeing these things. I'm not trying to jam things together. This is just naturally how it progresses and how things came to be. And keep in mind, as I went through this trail, I wasn't just reading whatever was on the Lockwood website and just going with that. I was going all over the place to different areas that have nothing to do with each other. And they are verifying these things like John Trump and Tesla and all this stuff. So this is where we start seeing this stuff come, come into play. Now, let's try to answer, answer a couple more loose ends because we have some loose ends here, obviously. We mentioned the Majestic 12, 1954, as well as the original stem of Nazis. Let's get those cleared up, shall we? The Majestic 12, or the MJ-12, is a men in black group created in 1947 by President Harry Truman. Why is this important? A year earlier, in 1948... Truman greenlit Operation Paperclip, which allowed roughly 2,000 Nazi occultic scientists into the U.S. government and CIA. So we've got Nazis, we've got the occult, and we've got aliens, Majestic 12, all this going on. That's right. This is important to know. For what comes next, the Majestic 12 were designed to explore UFOs and alien life and were the ones who covered up the Roswell incident. That's right. Let's take a look at the Majestic 12, shall we? These were the original 12. There was more of them, but these were the original guys that started this thing up. You'll notice it's a mix of American and German in there. Mm-hmm. So what does this have to do with Nazis in 1954? Well, Gleam, remember Gleam before it was Project Aquarius, began after certain Nazi technology was created. Gleam came after the Nazis came over, after all of their technology was developed, after all these things. And this was about the UFOs. Why is this important? I'll get to that in just a second. The Nazis were known for bringing forward extremely futuristic technology given to them by demons. How? The Nazis were using portals to allow the demons to come through. We talk a lot about demonic intelligence, how it's going to take over like AI and all these types of things. We don't have enough time to dive into all the stuff that the Nazis were doing. But these guys were Satanists. They were occultists. They were trying to enter into different dimensions, into different realms, and contact uh, higher intelligent beings in order to get an edge on technology and start rapidly advancing the future faster. Um, and so what they were doing, they were opening demonic portals, and these demons were, in fact, giving them information and details. This is all real stuff. You can verify it yourself giving them this information in order to create advanced technology. That is why the Nazis had just extremely advanced technology compared to everybody else at the time. And it kept moving faster is because they were getting told things that they really shouldn't have been getting told. And it ultimately, and it, it, they just had too much technology, advanced technology too fast. And we see the explosion that happened, but we see how it scattered all across the world. Yeah. Fascinating, right? Is it possible? And now this is a question. I don't have an answer. 
But is it possible that when they open these portals and they allow these demons to come through, is it possible that some of them went through? I don't know. I have no way to answer that, verify it, or any of that. It's just a question that popped up into my mind at that point. And then what happened to them at that point? I don't know. Um, but what about the advanced technology and the connections to UFOs? How am I going to tie all that stuff together? Have you guys ever seen a Nazi UFO? They had them. Back in World War II, back in the 30s, the Nazis had UFOs. That's correct. They had several different types of UFOs on this. You can see these things. They have the Iron Cross on there, the Nazi Iron Cross. They've got their cannons. They've got designs. Could it be that all the UFOs that all these people continue to see are in fact actual technology that the Nazis that created back then brought it over to the CIA today and we see military flying those things around, part of the deception that we see going? Could that be possible? Yeah, 1945. Hmm. That clears up a lot of questions, doesn't it? You know, we all, all, all these people that, how, how, how are we seeing all these things? Well, if the Nazis, driven by demonic intelligence back in the 30s and the 40s, had this type of, type of technology, and those same Nazis got folded into the CIA and were how many years ahead now, you think they got technology that could do exactly what the UFOs and stuff that we see going on? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, but if that's not enough, if you want something maybe just a little bit more grounded, just a little bit more grounded, what if I told you, you know how we have those fancy new B-2 and B-21 bombers here in the United States? What if I told you those were also Nazis technology as well? This is back in the 40s, guys. D does that look familiar? You can see the Iron Cross on there. Does that look familiar? It should, because that's the design of our B-2 spirit and our B-21 Raider. <laughs> yeah, Nazis had it back in the 40s. It's, it again, when you have, when you have people playing around where they shouldn't, with demons, with portals, with time travel, trying to be prophets and visionaries with this stuff, you start getting things like that, and you start getting mass deception playing a part in all of this. Just wait until the church is removed. And those demons are let loose. You're not going to want to be here for that. You're not going to want to be here for that at all. With the Nazi occultist scientist folded into the U.S. and the CIA with technology driven by demons and some really looking like UFOs, creating a division or yeah, a division led by the same people who are already experienced in that area would make sense. So you would create something like the Majestic 12. You would create something like Project Aquarius through that. Nazis, Majestic 12, Project Aquarius, Project Looking Glass, aliens, UFOs, time travel, Tesla, Trump, Ingersoll Lockwood, portals, demons, Nephilim, all connected. And we're not done. We're not done. Oh, and by the way, there's no such thing as aliens. It's demons or nothing. Just saying. So what brings it all together is these files, which I verified in other ways, were also on the Ingersoll Lockwood website, along with the file about Tesla being the original creator of Harp. 
Oh, snap. For real? Yeah, that's what they claim. The idea given is that Ingersoll Lockwood time traveled to meet Stephen G. Samuels and give him this information with instructions on when and how to release it. Keep in mind, this is Q stuff. Confusion. Who's the author of confusion? Satan. Now, doing so, according to this information, uh, if you follow his instructions, doing so will bring about the Great Awakening through Trump. The country will be saved and it will be made great again. That's what they're claiming. Okay, so we've whittled it down. Are you guys still with me? You guys hanging with me? Hopefully I haven't lost you. I haven't lost my mind. Again, I have a point for all of this. Stick with me. Seriously, stick with me. So we've whittled it down to a couple strings now. So we 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 had this, we started with a book, then we got all these things, we covered all that stuff. Now we're down to just two. We're down to two. Ingersoll Lockwood website, because there's more on it, and Stephen G. Samuels. Remember that name I told you to hang on to? Let's talk about the man who doesn't exist, Stephen G. Samuels. Now, Samuels is apparently the CEO of Ingersoll Lockwood and professes to have been visited by Lockwood, the writer himself. Now, you won't find much on Stephen G. Samuels, but you will find an LLC in the same name. Now, just like the website, the LLC also uses a Servcor or Servcorp address with a separate mailbox service address. Now, if you don't know what a Servcorp address is, it's like a virtual office. Uh, they have an office set up where um, they have a whole bunch of people who all use the same address and phone number lines all connected to it, and it's like a virtual office. So you won't find Ingersoll Lockwood at that address that they have listed. Um, actually, you can't even access the the office. That's how that works. But and then their mailing address is one that takes you to somewhere in Nevada. So their office is said to be in Washington, and their mailing address is said to be in Nevada. Both of which are virtual and or off premise services. Now it gets a little bit more crazy from there. The directors and the officers of that LLC, Samuel G. Uh, or Stephen G. Samuels, LLC, are noteworthy. Let's take a look because we're going to get some more information, some more strings to go off of here. We take a look at the corporation, Stephen G. Samuels, LLC. What's important about this? Incorporation date was in 2012. And then uh, if you take a look, uh, it says directors and officers, Gary S. Milovsky. You can see the agent address is in Las Vegas, Nevada, mail link, which is one of those services. But Gary S. Milovsky, that's the name that we want to hang on to right there. That's the important name uh, that we got to take a look at this. So hang on to that. We're not going to quite get to him yet. We still got a little bit more to go about this corporation. So while Ingersoll Lockwood has no copyright record, no form 990 because it claims to be a nonprofit and you need one of those. It doesn't have one of those. No tax filings, no EIN or tax ID, but yet it says that it does contracts with the government having none of that. We got something fishy going on, right? So there's no record of those contracts either. Hmm. It does, however, have a registration as a company in Newcastle, Delaware, dated February 19th, 2020. So Ingersoll, Ingersoll Lockwood Company was, uh, gave a, was given a registration February 19th, 2020. So it's very recent. Ingersoll Lockwood also has a trademark, which was filed on March 25th, 2020. And then was granted March 27th, 2020. So this is all pretty, pretty recent. All about the same time 2020 was going on, if you catch my drift. Okay. So Ingersoll Lockwood claims to have a partnership with several people. American Education Defenders. Um, I couldn't really find anything fishy about that. It looks kind of legit. So I didn't look any further into that. Carbon Capture Shield, which you will find them promoting that heavily on their files about Tesla and Harp. Kind of interesting. Cyber Defense Magazine. We're going to get there. Extensible Secure Optimized Cryptography. 
I didn't look into that website. I also don't recommend anybody does because when I tried to load that website, there was a crazy amount of trackers that were trying to get onto my computer. So I do not recommend looking into that. Don't do it. And I didn't either. And then there's member pack. So let's take a look at member pack. PAC, P-A-C, stands for Peaceful American Constitutionalists. And if you join their membership, they what they say is they would create a pool for its members for things like medical or legal matters. So everybody joins in, pools their money, and then they would give, uh, if somebody in, in the membership needs help with like a legal or a medical matter, they would use the funds for that. There's other companies that do the same type of thing. They claimed that that's what they were doing. Now, the thing is, is you can't find any actual information of PAC and Ingersoll Lockwood when it comes to this. It's just poof, gone. Um, there is a connection, however, of PAC to a Texas candidate who's running for 2024, Carolyn Kane. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this uh, this person before. Uh, where Where is it? There it is. Got a bunch of these. So if you go to her Ballotpedia and you take a look, what organizations or individuals have endorsed your campaign? And the only one listed is Peaceful American Constitutionalists. I, I'll be honest, that one, I, I got nothing. Um, that one doesn't make any sense. There's stuff where apparently they raised like $100,000, but then they had to refund the stuff and... There's a whole bunch there. I just didn't see it worth going any further than that. Um, so I just kind of hit the hit the wall on that and just said, okay, I'm going to bail on this. But clearly this member pack seems to be a fake program. Why they're listed as an, the only endorser of that person, I don't know. I got nothing. So I just bailed on that. It wasn't worth my time. And I moved over to Cyber Defense Magazine, and this is where I got something big. Cyber Defense Magazine is where that string kept going. <clears throat> so Ingersoll Lockwood, the company, claims Cyber Defense Magazine as a partner, but a statement put out by Cyber Defense Magazine says they were acquired by Ingersoll Lockwood two months after Ingersoll became, a, or became incorporated. So if we take a look, this is a statement from the magazine. It's the Cyber Defense Media Group, which owns the magazine. Uh, acquired by U.S. defense contractor Ingersoll Lockwood. So they put this out as a actual news bulletin on that. Things are just going to get a little bit more weird from here. Hang with me. Um, so why is this important? Remember that name I told you to put in your pocket? Pull it out, gently unfold it, because we're going to start using it again. Gary S. Milovsky who is listed as an officer slash director of Stephen G. Samuels LLC is also the chairman and CEO of Cyber Defense Media Group, the ones who publish Cyber Defense Magazine. So we've got this guy, Milovsky, connected to Stephen G. Samuels LLC, as well as Cyber Defense, which is now connected to Ingersoll Lockwood. Following along, hang with me. Gary here is connected to Ingersoll Lockwood, Stephen G. Samuels, and Cyber Defense Magazine. But if that's not enough, Stephen G. Samuels LLC even holds the trademark for Cyber Defense Magazine. You can see Stephen G. Samuels LLC, they hold Smart Putty, Cyber Defense Magazine, and InfoSec Awards. So we've got a whole mishmash of these companies and this dude all wrapped up together. We're going to go a little bit further with this guy. So who is Gary S. Milovsky? That's the next question. Here's his mug right there. But I'll be honest. I'm not sure this dude's real. Um, when I try to look up this guy, when I try to get more information on him, there's small little clips of him talking but, and his profiles kind of all use the same picture. Something doesn't sit right with this. This dude doesn't seem real. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe I didn't look in the right places. That's definitely possible. But it just does not seem like he's real. But I still needed to look a little bit further. If you look into his profile, 
says he's a founding member of the United States Department of Homeland Security. Hmm. He served on the National Information Security Group. You want to hang on to those. They'll come up a little bit later. Um, served on the Oval Advisory Board of MITRE and was part of different government cybersecurity programs as well as Intel slash McAfee, IBM, and DARPA. So if this guy is in fact real, if he's real, and he's all wrapped up in Ingersoll, Stephen G. Samuels, uh, um, Cyber Defense Magazine, all these things, he's all in cahoots with Department of Homeland Security, Cyber Division, and all that stuff. Hmm. PSYOP, maybe? I don't know. Now, you might be thinking, we're out of strings, right? Nope, we are not. My next string was McAfee. Why McAfee? Why did I pick that? Knowing his involvement with government, cybersecurity, as well as the information that apparently he had on a lot of high up people, I found it interesting that his name was attached to this guy of all people. So I ended up coming across a Reddit page talking about a hidden countdown clock on the Ingersoll Lockwood website with a possible dead man trigger connected to John McAfee. If you don't know what a dead man trigger is, is something that you set up that you have to log into um, at a certain, uh, certain time. But if you don't log into it, like yearly or monthly, however you set it, if you don't log into it, it will automatically trigger and send something out. And so some people thought that this countdown had something to do with McAfee and because he didn't log into it, it started this countdown clock that popped up on the Ingersoll website. That's what other people have come up with. Now, looking through the Wayback Machine, because I was back there again, I found that countdown page. Now, this is where things start. I know it's been bananas so far, but things start getting even more bananas at this point. So hang with me. Here's the countdown page. And again, it had secret stuff on there that I had to do the thing. It says countdown 2021. This is from the website in 2021. It says, what day was the U.S. Constitution signed? What was, uh, who was born many years later the next day? And then it says, TikTok, shall we play a game? N-C-S-W-I-C. -C. Okay. So first, let's start with the questions. Constitution was signed on September 17th. That's the day. The next day, again, this is where the connection to John McAfee happens because he was born on September 18th. So that would put him at the next day many years later. Now, someone else pointed out that Richard Grenell was uh, born September 18th as well. If you don't know who Richard Grenell, Grenell, who that is, he was Trump's uh, acting director of national intelligence. So that is a possibility that something was going on with that. But I really couldn't find a true answer to what that all meant. So I got nothing there. The next part that interested me was at the bottom when it had NCSWIC. I came across two things that this is important. One, it stands for nothing can stop what is coming. That is Q. Whenever you see those letters, whenever you hear nothing can stop what is coming, that is a reference to Q. So we got another connection to Q, even though they say that they're not a part of it. We got another connection to Q. But it's also this. Another connection to Gary S. Milovsky. NCSWIC was established by the Department of Homeland Security, Cyber uh, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency in July 2010. The National Council of Statewide Interop Interoperability Coordinators supports statewide interoperability coordinators from the 56, 56 states and territories by developing products and services to assist yada, yada, yada. This is straight from... CISA.gov. I got it myself straight from the website. Same thing. So we've got cyber and national security part of DHS. That's Gary S. Milovsky. And then we've got Q. 
Hmm. It's wild, guys. Okay, so it's here that we have another split. And this is probably the most important part. So if I've lost you from the beginning, I want you to try and come back with me right now because this is the important part. This is where I tie it all together and is the main point of why we went through this entire rabbit uh, rabbit hole. I want you to hang with me. So I wanted to find out what that countdown ended up being. That was my main point that I wanted to look into. But before we do that, I need to talk about one little thing first that ties it all together. Everything we've covered so far leads to these two specific strings, and they've been the theme through the entire thing. We've seen it pop up through the entire thing. The first thing I want to point out is at the bottom of the homepage of the Ingersoll Lockwood website. You will find a very tiny little picture, almost looks like a dot, at the very bottom underneath all of the writing. And it gets updated with new links and or drops. That's Q again. As of today, if you click on it, it'll take you to Abbott's letter about the border. But the image is what I want to focus on because the image, if blown up, you get this. You get a Mickey watch set to 10 after 10. So I wanted to investigate this further. First thing I noticed, Ingersoll, the watch company, was the first one to have produced the Mickey Mouse watch. Hmm. So Ingersoll, and no, I looked into that. That Ingersoll watch company has nothing to do with Ingersoll Lockwood. Different Ingersoll. But, of course, Ingersoll Lockwood would then use Ingersoll Watch to do that. Now, why is the Mickey set to 10 after 10 so important? Well, after a little bit more digging, if you go to QDrop4730, you will find the picture of a Mickey Mouse Watch set to 10 after 10. For a group, a website, whoever the heck it is, who claims that they're not a part of Q and to tell everybody that they're not, they sure have a lot of references to Q. Hmm. Now, without a doubt, we have them. They're the same. Ingersoll and Q, they're the same. But let's solidify that connection even more because I want to make sure that it is, in fact, the real thing. And so we go back to the countdown of 2021, and it was set to expire on September 17th, 2021, and the page ended up changing to this. It might be hard to read. I'll read it for you because it's a secret message, of course, hidden in secret. First, let's prepare. Are there many things underway from the good and just to help turn this around? Yes. Should you not prepare, stand up legally and ethically, unite with fellow like-minded citizens? We are not Q. Q told you or was misunderstood when saying patriots in control and enjoy the show, which signals to many, this isn't my fight. I can passively sit back, have some death kill by Monsanto's GMO popcorn and relax. This is not the cases yet. Every day there are new dynamics and changes. A battle is only won at the very end, even if a plan to win is executed brilliantly. Strategic fluid change is inevitable, especially when dealing with Luciferian, which is spelled incorrectly, interesting, demon rats. Oh boy, let's not. We are not delivering news on the 17th that you can enjoy the show. Rather, that you must not be a spectator, especially at this critical juncture. Now we start seeing some of this Christianese start rolling in. This is key to understanding why I'm going to talk about the very end of this. 
Dear God, please uplift and guide us with your help. My question, I pray humbly for an answer. Is there anything I can do or we can do together to turn this around, reclaim all of our God-given rights, and reclaim America before it's too late? And it says, from sick, evil, twisted, malicious, globalists, funded, baby child sacrificing, satanic ritual performing, secret societies, blackmail, greed, and power, driven, Luciferians, which is spelled incorrect again. There's, there's a lot of typos on that website. If there's anything close to your one question, please write it in your own words. Post it once per day from 9-12-2021 to 9-17-2021. Post it everywhere with the hashtags, we will not comply and we the people. And link to this page. And by midnight east uh, wind time, we will attempt to answer your question on this page. See you back here on the 17th, following the most holy day of the year to the Jews and Jesus and his early disciples. May God bless you, your family, and the United States of America. Kind of creepy, isn't it? Just a tad bit on my creep meter. But you're seeing the Christianese coming in. You're going to see a little bit more as we go across this. Remember, this is the important part. Now, there's another page on the same day, a little bit shorter. But it says, um, no, actually, that's the same thing. I have absolutely, oh, no, no, no. That's right. It's a little bit different. Because at the bottom, that's right. I put. That's why I put this on here. At the bottom, it says, if you are here on the 17th, you have been inscribed in the book of life. Now, question. How were you inscribed in the book of life by just showing up to a web page about freeing America? You're not, are you? No, no, you're not. No, it's only through Jesus Christ will you get into the book of life. So we've got something fishy going on here. Now I flipped over to September 18th. This is the next day because it was talking about post your questions types of things. And then the next day it was different. We got a Mickey watch again. Set to 10 after 10. Interesting. So this is countdown 2021. The answer to the one question you ask yourself every day will be given via email, midnight, tonight, opt in, all that stuff. Are you doing your patriotic duty? Evil fears you. A patriot of the great awakening. There it is again. If you're afraid to email or mail your personal version of this letter called today, and it says the sleeper has not awakened yet. There we go with the sleeper awaken again. Then at the bottom, there again, we have the, if you are here on the 17th, you have been inscribed in the book of life. We got a little secret message again, the same secret message. Now I followed those links and I got to this page. Oh Yeah. Yeah, it gets weird. It says, TikTok, the sleeper must awaken. It's time. And it says, please click on a link to hear the audio version of this message. Message from Ingersoll Lockwood begins. And there's a little white rabbit. And it goes on to say, have you ever, uh, how do you get to Wonderland over the hill or under land? And then it goes through, we the people type of thing. It says, I am Ingersoll Lockwood, and I shall be your guide as we traveled through time and space. That's right. This message here is now claiming is directly from Ingersoll Lockwood, the writer who wrote those books. That's right. We have now gotten to this part of things. Let's take a look. I didn't get the whole message. I just got some of the important stuff. It says, it is birthed, the new timeline. That's what he's talking about. Through Looking Glass. It is birthed on January 20th, 2017 in Washington, D.C. Who was brought in on that day? Yet, once again, Luciferian strike. It's October 18th, 2019. Enter the Great Reset, Event 201. They will suffocate once and for all Great uh, humanity's great awakening. The final countdown has begun. It will be traveling forward to explore the possibilities and return to share my findings. 2030 beckons me. Here we go. 2030 again. Vision question mark. Prophecy question mark. Actual time travel question mark. Project looking glass question mark. Metaphor question mark. Futurist precognition. More confusion. More deception. More questions to make you go around in circles and chase your tail. Author of confusion, who is that? Satan. 
While I can offer guidance, only together can the awakened affect the necessary changes to save humanity. Only the enlightened, as the new age would say, will be able to save humanity. My time invested in sharing my knowledge of the timeline with Franklin Patrick Herbert Jr. Here we go with uh, Dune again. Steve Samuels, we're back there, and many other keepers of the flame. Now, I'll be honest, I wanted to look in that into that. I just didn't have enough time. Um, so I don't have anything on that, but it is interesting. Must not go to waste. It's time, your time. So much to do, so little time. Time is the fire in which we burn. We are running out of time. And then it says, the fate of humanity rests in the hands of the awakened. The sleeper must awaken. Now, I noticed, or I, I mentioned that little white rabbit at the top. I followed the little white rabbit. And so let's see what the little white rabbit had for us, shall we? Oh, snap. Where have we heard this before? The Great Awakening versus the Great Reset. <clears throat> it says we're back from 2030. Looking, gra looking glass, predictive, pre uh, Pre-science, pre time travel, all question marks. How do we win this battle of good versus evil together? We have something in mind. We are in a silent, silent global war. It's a battle of good versus evil. We must continue to red pill patriots and spread the truth quickly across America to become that shining light and beacon for our hope, our, for hope of all for all of humanity. You found us and we're not ad, uh, advertising. What does that tell you? If you're a globalist shill, you're in for an eternity in hell. If you're a patriot, now is your chance to thank God, creator of the universe, that you will uh, that you will live a fulfilled life as part of, part of the final humanity saving great awakening. Remember the globalists own predictive programming in the matrix. Neo learns that those that remain plugged into the matrix can at any time become the enemy. Matrix, Alice in Wonderland, White Rabbit, all connected. Part of the Great Reset is to ensure a majority of societies live in fear while they beg for cures that cull the herd. That reduces global population. The globalists can only win through spreading fear. One must never live in fear, no matter the condition or consequences. Hmm. Down below this is this picture. A little few cube yellow that says looking glass who's holding it i don't know i blew up the face so you guys can get a good view maybe you know who that is i don't know but this picture was underneath that talking about looking glass with the yellow cube with a q hmm all coming together isn't it and he appears to be a general Appears to be a general. Now, there's one last part to that page that I cut out specifically. Now, remember, this page, I went, went into the Wayback Machine, and this is from September 18th, 2021. At the bottom of this page, there's a prediction. Now, before I even show it, again, the only one who knows the future is God. Period. But it's very interesting back in 2021, they would post a specific date. Let's take a look. In faith, prayer, and God variables factored in at exponential rate, the Great Awakening reclaims humanity by 4-10-2024. Timing of globalist deaths, arrests, and other key factors already entered into the equation. End output. Looking glass output. That's what they mean. Nothing can stop what is coming. This was posted September 18th. 2021. What's going to happen 
in April on the 10th. Nothing, something, who knows? But it's fascinating that back then they put it put a specific date about that. Very interesting. Very interesting. This is without a doubt. We have solidified it. There's absolutely no question anymore. This is without a doubt Q. And it is driven. It is driven by demons. Period. I will argue that one. The Q movement, Ingersoll, Lockwood, all of that stuff, the Great Awakening, Great Reset, driven by demons, period. And we have a ton of Christians that are all wrapped up in Q, in Ingersoll, Lockwood, and the Great Awakening. Another connection that I found was there was a connection to the Mark Meadows PDF that had to do with the election stuff, January 6th, all that stuff. We're not going to get into that for reasons I'm sure you understand because of the platform we're on. That contains a hidden Kraken Intel logo. If you guys don't know who Kraken Intel is, it's connected to Sidney Powell. And that PDF is indeed connected to the Ingersoll Lockwood website as well. All of this leads to a connection which many, many, many Christians are wrapped up in. And I get asked this question often. I've addressed it a little bit in the past. I didn't really dive into it like I did today or this past week, I should say. It's called the Great Reawakening. I'm sure a lot of you recognize this. And I'm sure a lot of you recognize the great and re is slightly different, but it says the great awakening versus the great reset. Why is that important? That's not it. Where is it? Right there. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You know how we talk about white magic black magic well they're both magic one's just clearly evil and the other one is put on display as something good well why is that important one is clearly evil and one is put on display as something good it's not good what you see is an identical match to everything that we just dug through. That great reawakening is filled with NAR dominionists, is filled with fake Christians, yes, fake Christians, filled with Q conspirators, and filled with people directly tied to Donald Trump. That's not good. And if you're a Christian that is taking part of that, I certainly hope after this, you stop. Because the same stuff that we just drove all the way through all the red strings, connecting to all the confusion, to all the, the d demonic stuff, to the mysticism, to, to all of this stuff is the same stuff that is leading that great, great awakening. If we take a look at the roster of this thing. General Michael Flynn. He's a New Ager. He's a Luciferian. Claims to be a Christian. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. And he was one of the lead guys in pushing the Q conspiracy theory. All the 4D chess that Trump was playing, he was one of the main guys. Well, he's a part of it. Sidney Powell, I just mentioned Kraken Intel. She was also a pusher of the Q thing as well. Mike Adams, Health Ranger, on his show, verbally compared Donald Trump to Jesus Christ. 
and said he needed to be just like Jesus and be defenseless in order to save the country. And he needs to get nailed to the cross. That's right. That's Mike Adams, Health Ranger, Natural News. He was also a pusher of Q. Of course, you got Trump family involved. You got Pastor Greg Locke, who has completely surrounded himself with demons. That dude is so far off the rails. Amanda Grace. Many people may not have heard of her. She claims to be a female preacher, a prophetess, to get divine revelation from God about Donald Trump and Republicans, about how they're going to take the country back. Yep. Charlie Kirk, defender of the alphabet and abortion piranha that travels from different Christian groups because he understands he can feed off of them to push his political agenda. Alex Jones, straight up new ager. And I have absolutely no doubt that he's being fed information by the globalists on the inside. That's how he gets all the information that he's allowed to. And Sean Foich, Bethelites. He enjoys uh, grave soaking and getting his angel numbers, which is demons that give him specific uh, codes through numbers. Well, he's a dominionist as well. And there's more. I just pick some of those. They're all wrapped up in it. That, as much as they like to push as a conservative Christian group, is not. It's demonic. Everything that we just went through, and yes, there is a ton of questions that I can't answer. How on earth did that writer in the 19th century be able to call the way that he did through those books? I don't know. But all that stuff is clearly in Satan's playbook. And he's using things like the Great Reawakening to get to the Christian church. That's my point. It's all confusion. It sends you on a wild ride of spider webs that go everywhere and you just keep running in circles. Do you see how we fo follow that trail that we just went through? That is clearly satanic. Clearly. And it's the same thing in the Great Reawakening. The Great Reawakening, the awakening, whatever you want to call it, is New Age. Comes from, again, Gnostic belief. All religions wrap up in the awakening of the mind. And when it talks about the great, week, great, uh, the great reawakening, about getting a collective group of people to come back to restore order and harmony to a country or to the world, that's the exact same premise, exact same premise as the age of Aquarius. It's the age of enlightenment. That's not Christian. not Christian at all. And my Bible tells me, if you're not with God, you're against God. There's one last name that I thought was interesting that was tied to the Thrive Time, Clay Clark's thing that puts on that, that show. If you've been a part of my End Times New Age series, you'll recognize this name. Sharon Lecter. She was a part of the administration of Bush and Obama. I think it was Bush. Bush and Obama. She's a part of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. She is the one who released Napoleon's book about him having a conversation with the devil called Outwitting the Devil. She is the one that released that book and she's the one that released the secret chapter of it. Ain't Nothing Christian about that. Nothing. And she's connected to Thrive Time. Told you I had a point to all of this.
My point is, as somebody who spends hours, countless hours digging through trails like this, some I keep going, some I stop. Most I don't share with you because either it's not relevant or it's not worth it. Or again, I just spin in circles. But as somebody who digs through rabbit holes like this, this is what I do. My point is there's going to be a lot of stuff, a lot of information that piques our interest, little hooks that grab us, that want us to start spinning through the web that's been weaved. Coming up with, oh, if I can just find the next one, if I can just find the next one, if I can just find the next one. And there's little bits of truth. You know, all the stuff that we went through, there's some truth all throughout that stuff, like the Nazi technology and everything. Like that, that's all legit. That's real stuff. But there's a lot of stuff that's not right in there either. But it's just enough truth to get you to believe in it, to get you hooked. And if you don't, have the ability to decipher some of that stuff, you can get lost. Like many Christians got lost in the Q movement. Like many Christians got lost in the Ingersoll Lockwood movement. Like many Christians are now lost in the Great Awakening or the Great Reawakening. There's just enough that holds on to just enough Christianese, just enough conservatism, just enough freedom fighter, just enough of something to keep us hooked. And Satan wants that. He wants that so bad. So he plants that little nugget to keep a hold of you and to go down a path, a spider web that we really shouldn't go. What we went through is the satanic underbelly of Q, of Ingersoll Lockwood and the Great Awakening. None of these things are good. They are built in a web of confusion, deception, secrecy, and designed to keep you spinning. The Great, Reaw uh, the Great Reawakening tour fits perfectly within the shadowy underbelly while displaying a nice list of faces centered around freedom, Christianity, and truth. Ultimately, it's filled with Q, New Age, and demonic presence playing into the hand exactly how the globalists want. They're playing directly into that hand of division, of rising against kind of the same thing we see going on at the Texas border. And more importantly, what Satan wants. I, avert, I urge you, strongly urge you to avoid all those groups. Deception is thick in this world. Matthew 24, disciples come to Jesus. The first thing he warns of, take heed. Listen to me. That's if, if that's the best way to put it. When he says take heed, what he says is listen carefully. Listen to this thing that I'm about to tell you that follows this warning. Do not be deceived. We think we got it all figured out. And I'm not excluding myself. We think we got it all figured out. Oh, this guy, he's he gets it. He's got it. This group, they got it. They've got the truth. I'm okay following and believing whatever they say. Mm. You sure? You sure? Myself included. I tell you guys all the time. Everything that I put out, verify it yourself. Verify it yourself. Do not take everything I say at face value. Because I could be wrong. I try really hard to make sure that I vet everything and to verify things. And I try not to stumble into the speculation stuff. I just try to bring you guys what I find. But verify it. Verify everybody else. 
and my biggest warning, and I don't, I don't usually step into this pool very often, but I'm going to step into it now. Don't believe any politician. I don't care what they say. Keep them at arm's length. I'm not saying write everybody off at this point, write the majority off, but just keep them at arm's length. There's a reason why they're in that position. It includes Donald Trump. Because a lot of people might look at what we just went through and go, he's not directly tied to it. Okay. Keep telling yourself that. You think we're fixing this? You think a new age great awakening is going to fix this? My Bible says otherwise. I'll go with what that says. Not what all those people say. Deception is thick and goes deep. Deeper than what we just went through. Take that warning from Jesus very seriously. And again, I urge you, avoid Q, avoid Ingersoll Lockwood, and avoid the Great Reawakening. I know we went through a lot to just make that one little point at the end, but I think that exercise, that, that adventure, that journey that we just went on really displays how it works. I think it really displays how it works. And so with that, through all of this, comes the most important part. And I see I don't have any questions, so we're just going to go ahead and get to the most important part. Jesus. Jesus. The most important part. He was, he is, and he is to come. The most important part. Because without Jesus, you lose. Without Jesus, there's no winning. It's through Jesus we have victory. He's already won it. He's already won it. There's no need for a great awakening to try and save a planet that God's going to burn down to a crisp in the end. I think a great awakening is going to save that. You think Donald Trump is going to save that? You think Q is going to save that? Doubt it. <laughs> Doubt it. So if you're watching this and you don't have the most important part, Jesus, I love saying that name, Jesus, now's the time to do so. Now's the time to forget all that. Just put your, 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 your faith in Jesus. That's it. Matthew 18. Matthew 18, he picks up a little child, sets him in the midst, and says, be like this child. What does that mean? It means have the faith and the trust like a child in Jesus. Now, what does that mean? A child's trust, a child's faith is unwavering. It's unquestioning. It's not confusing. It's just 100% there. And so he tells us to be like that child, for it's the child who will inherit the kingdom of God. And we are to put our childlike faith, our childlike trust in him. How do we do that? Simple as ABC. A, as you admit that you're a sinner. What is that? Well, you admit that you're a sinner. You admit that you have sinned. You admit that you need Jesus alone, only Jesus, to save you from those sins. And so you repent of your sinful lifestyle. You turn from that to Jesus. You pursue Jesus. You want Jesus. 
In order to truly believe in Jesus, you have to understand why you need him as your savior. And it's that repentance that does so. It's the admittance that does so. And so when you repent, you can then believe in Jesus Christ. You believe that he is the one and only son of God, the one and only begotten son of God, that he came down 100% man, 100% God, the God man, the one and only God man. And he lived the perfect sinless life. Again, the one and only. And it's because of that that he was the perfect sacrifice to save us. So he took our place upon that cross where we should be. He took it for us. And he died. But just as he promised, just as he said he would, he defeated death and rose again on the third day. And it's through this, through the defeating of death, that if we put our faith and our belief in Jesus, we will not perish, but spend eternity in the presence of him. So you repent, you believe, and see as you call upon the Lord. It's that prayer where you say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned, Lord. I need you alone, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the one and only son of God, that you came down and lived the perfect sinless life. And I believe that you died on that cross. And on the third day, you rose again. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my life, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins and save me, Lord Jesus. If you truly believe, you will be saved. No great awakening needed. No trying to fight against God's prophetic plan that's already happened for him. We just put our faith and trust in Jesus and allow him, allow him to guide us where he wants us to go. All right, guys. That's all I got. That is all I got. Thank you for joining me on this crazy journey. Hopefully I didn't lose you guys. Um, I told you I'm not a madman. I had a reason for all of this. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, usual spiel, like, share, subscribe, get this out to as many people as you can. It's not about views, not about butts and seats, but it is about getting the warning out to people, getting people to Jesus. And that's what we need to do. That's what our focus needs to be, is to get the gospel of Jesus to as many people as we can. Don't get distracted by worldly things that are just not going to matter in the end. Focus on getting the gospel of Jesus out to people. And with how the algorithm works, how technology works, like and sharing and subscribing helps get it out to more people. So if you guys can do me a solid and uh, like, share, subscribe, that'd be great. Also follow me, Rumble Odyssey Telegram. Those are my backup channels. When I get booted off YouTube, we'll be back at live streaming on Rumble. Odyssey is just kind of emergency platform. Nothing exclusive. You're not missing out. But if you got an account, you might as well follow me there. And then Telegram as well. I post updates and news things and, and other things that I don't necessarily post on YouTube or whatnot, just smaller things. Um, so, yeah. So make sure you follow me there. And, um, yeah, if you guys want to help me keep going with this, hopefully I didn't lose your support after this wild ride, but I told you there was a plan. But if you guys want to help me keep going with this, um, with this ministry, you guys are the ones that allow me to do this. My channel is not monetized. I get no money from ads or views or anything. It's solely off of your guys' generosity. So if the Lord placed it upon your heart, I have donation links down below. Cash app, Venmo, and Give, Send, Go. And for you, for all you who support me and pray for me and all these things, thank you. Truly, thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. So thank you. Um, if we just get one, one soul to Jesus, it's all worth it. I'll tell you what. So, all right, that's all I got. I'm going to leave you guys right here. We went a little late. I apologize. We got church tomorrow. Just get your heathenic booty to church, whether online or in person, doesn't matter as long as it's a Bible believing Christ following church. That's the important part. And uh, make sure you guys get there and share the gospel of Jesus with everybody that you can. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you right here. You guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And if the Lord does not come back by Tuesday, same time, same place, I'll meet you guys right here. Peace out and Maranatha.
You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.